welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. Our heroes have agreed to join Prince Mudbutt for a belated bachelor party. Alan fought with her mom and the battle isn't over yet. Reginald decided to impersonate Butthole out of fear of Mudbutt's wrath. And Quinny despaired at how poorly his kingship is going. What are an insane prince's bachelor party activities? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons. Mudbutt, the day of your bachelor party has arrived. Um, you have been waiting quite some time for this. So long, in fact, that you have forgotten most of what you had planned. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> yep. um, Tiana has been good enough to kind of make sure everything's still up to date. Um, but while you remember the, the punchline, which of course is finally killing that damn wizard who convinced you to burn down Winchester, uh, a lot of the specifics are kind of lost in translation. So um, you pull out a, a grimy, dirty, like many stain page that you've written all these things down on. Um, and um, the first event um, that uh, is, uh, of course, very important is making sure everyone is properly equipped. Um, You are a a four-person bachelor party, uh, and you need to know, as all good bachelor parties do, people need to know when you go places that you're all together and that you're you're in support of of Mudbutt. So you've had T-shirts made um, with a slogan (laughs) on them um, about, about the event. Um, that everyone's gonna wear. That will show that that they're they're on Team Mud. But um, what do you think the shirt says, and what does it look like? Um, uh, it says Mud Mud Buds, and um, <laughs> it's it's my face right in the middle with like a little uh, the my baby Richard in my beard sticking out, uh, and it has uh, little cartoon figures of of the friends around my face. But oh. then, but there's a, there's there's like a, a a Richard in the corner with a halo on its head, and he's kind of like, oh, he's, I love he's the, this. He's there too, um, <clears throat> but I'm I'm wearing that over like very like elaborate battle ready golden armor, and and I because I'm the bachelor, I have like an armor top hat that I'm wearing instead of my usual like horns. Mm-hmm. Nice. Does the yeah. top hat have horns as well? Um. Uh, would they? You know what? They, they're not. Uh, I can attach them. Excellent. All right. They're love in my it. pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like man, man, you can screw them on. Like, yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, love that. Um, and of course, you've got Deathmonger with you. Um, yeah. Which I, I believe was powered up uh, in your previous adventure. So you hand out these shirts to everyone. Um, bachelor parties are known for their uh, dumb trinkets, uh, be they uh, penis straws or usually penis shaped things. Um, what do you think the dumb trinket everyone has to carry with them is? Um, oh God, it's uh, it would be a barrel that they always have to have full of of booze. So it's a okay. pretty big barrel that people need to kind of like. It's more like a backpack, and it's full of booze. Oh barrel God. backpacks. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and uh, it's very heavy. <laughs> Uh, we'll say that uh, there's the, the backpack options um, that uh, you might ditch when you get to the hotel, but um, they also have flagons of like b- like tiny barrels that they just like hang off their belts. So you can fill those from the big keg on your back or from from places you go. Totally. Um, OK, great. Um, and of course, one of the fun things with bachelor parties is usually everyone has a hand in planning them. Now, of course, your friends weren't here for it. Um, but uh, one of your first requests is that each of them comes up with a thing that either you have to do or the entire team has to do over the course of the Bachelor Party adventures. So uh, Quinny, Alan, and Reginald, each of you has to come up with a thing that must must be done um, over the course of the adventure. Um, we can have those spring up as we go, or if you have them now, we can talk about them. It honestly depends on what you think your character would do in terms of this. Is it a... When the when it occurs, I'll just spring it on you, or is it a I want us all to know that we need to be on the lookout for blank? Hmm. Also, oh. keeping in mind, it should be a, a mud butt related. Yeah. Thing. I'll well, say for myself, is, I don't have anything right now. This isn't a thing to do, but a thing that you absolutely cannot do is refer to me as your daughter, because <sighs> having your daughter along on your bachelor party is fucking inappropriate. Oh. But- <laughs> Look, if the internet has taught us anything, the rules don't apply to step-siblings. 
Well, step, I, step I want, daughters. That's yeah. the only thing I step, ask. Step daughters, yeah. Well, the, why, why, why not? We just, we, we could just be friends then. Just for today, we're just, we're just butts. I'm not your buddies. I'm not your old dad that you've known for years and years. <laughs> uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's. I'm glad we're on the same page. And I, I give her like a baseball mitt. I'm just like, hey, why don't we just, uh, you know, toss out a couple old uh, baseball catches here and, uh, you know, relive the old good old uh, days. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Toss I, around the old pigskin, if that's what baseballs are made of. <laughs> pigskin? Sure. Yep. With, it is in with a baseball glove? Yeah. yeah. Just a what? flayed pig. Is oh, just... yeah. It's just a head. It's like, just talk around the well, old pig. Well, you use part head. of it to make the glove and part of it to make the ball. Yeah. 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 Oh, geez. And I think uh, Re- Reginald will step forwards, and it's interesting for everyone here because he looks a little different than he did yesterday. Um, for Mudbutt, he looks even more like Butthole somehow. Uh... For Quinny, he looks like he might be slyer and a little bit smarter. Like he's like a criminal version of him, which is interesting. Uh, And for Alan, there's like an air of Declan and honor system about him somehow, though you don't know how. And the reason why is at the beginning of his day, uh, he snorted a gem that gives him the power of being alluring. So he has advantage (laughs) on all charisma checks but disadvantage on initiative rolls. Uh, and basically, he decided to make himself more likable in the hopes he can last longer before he gets caught. Okay, very so good. He, he's that gonna, good. So that works on all of us. Yeah. It works on every, it, oh, every time shit. he has to do a charisma check. So if it involves you guys, you just like him more. Oh, uh, wow. And I think what he'll say is, all right, so everybody's doing activities, which is wonderful. And I've been doing a lot of thinking. Uh, and I'm pro-union. There's no better union than marriage. So I'm thinking between me and Moonhammer, go Moonhammer. And he does the fist. Uh, He jumps in the air and throws a fist in the air like a cheerleader. And he's like, I think it's time for us to really build a future moving forwards. So here's the deal. Anytime anybody talks about the past like a loser, we all have to drink. You know, we got to focus on the future. So we're just going to talk about what's coming in the future and no talking about the past. Pasts are for losers. We're building new relationships today. Go ahead and he's roll. like very impressed. He's <laughs> getting ready like big thumbs up like over Mudbutt's shoulder. It, it this occurs, does like legit remind me of Declan. It also occurs to me that <laughs> Quinny might actually like Reginald more. <laughs> like he loves Butthole. <laughs> But weirdly, like, this is is actually closer to, to kind of his jam. Okay, yeah. so Ryan, uh, can you go ahead and roll me a persuasion check, please? Uh, obviously, that's charisma, so go ahead and use your, your crazy drug bonus. <laughs> and that's a 12. Okay. Um, all right, so it's, um, I think everyone, uh, the way we'll play this is everyone agrees to it, but you don't get the sense that it, it will necessarily last. It's the kind of thing where everyone's like, remember, we're going to have one water between every two drinks on this bachelor party <laughs> adventure. <laughs> and then like three hours later, everyone's like, what's a water? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, OK, cool. Um, I got one. OK, go while ahead. we were talking, I got it. Um, it's going to mean taking a drink because it is based on the past. But uh, uh, Quinny uh, will say, um, hey, do you remember Mudbutt uh, when... Uh, we were escaping the legions of your your father's undead ash army. Oh um, yeah, yeah. And I was like riding around on you and like kind of s- trying to s- kind of like steer you from like the horns of your your helmet and stuff like that. That was pretty fun, right? Uh-huh. Oh, he said, "Remember, everybody's got to do a drink. We yeah. don't like Whoa. talking about memories." Yeah. Yeah. Happy nine a.m. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and Queen's like, "Oh, <laughs> just like yeah, drinks." Um, and he says, and Butthole uh, and Alan did the same thing, right? So I think we totally need to have a race. So, yeah, sounds good to me. One one lap around New Winchester, sound good for everyone? <laughs> Are we doing that right now? <laughs> or whenever, I don't know when you want to do it. If you're the one getting married. I'm the magic boy, let's do it right now. <laughs> so uh, there's a mechanic I'm adding to this particular adventure um, to keep in the spirit of the thing. Uh, I will tell you, this is going to be a very long day. Like, this is a Jack Bauer length day. Uh, I said 9 a.m. Let's say 7 a.m. Because I really I feel like this is a we're going camping morning. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's you know, just after dawn in New Winchester. Um, we're going to be tracking drinks. 
Um, oh, and I'm going to be fuck. boring a mechanic from um, uh, Blood and Syrup and Vampire the Masquerade. Um, in that game, uh, as you perform more and more vampiric acts, uh, you get thirstier and thirstier. In our case, um, you guys are going to be drinking all day. So um, we're gradually going to be adding dice to your dice that might interfere with your dice. So please track your drinks um, okay. and l let me know when you hit uh, four, please. Okay, so okay. We're, we're all at one now? I, I, I have something, idea? but I'm going to wait to reveal what I totally want fair. everyone to do yep. until later. Tom. Absolutely. Yes, Ryan. Because I am of the order of the mutant, I am immune to poison and the poisoned condition. Can I get drunk? Um, the way I've always taken that is in a weird, like, sci-fi way where I would argue you can choose. Because the, well, alcohol is technically a poison. I would argue that, I mean, like, you know what? Um, Ryan, I'm just going to say that it's, uh, it's halved for you. So still track it the right. way you do, but we'll play by Witcher rules, which is like, can confirm Geralt gets fucked up, but it means he drinks like an unholy amount in order right. to do so. So we'll say yes, but it takes more. I'm immune to toxicology, but I'm resistant to alcohol. Yes, that makes sense to me. Yeah, well, and, and also it, it's that like, the immunity to toxicology would be like, if you drink enough alcohol that you're like, oh no, this this is like... It'll never give me alcohol poisoning, but I can still get fucked up. Yeah, that makes Yeah, sense and you have to work twice as hard. Like, you're immune to poison in that if you drink some poison, you're like, haha, I'm fine. But if you continue to chug the poison, you would eventually become overwhelmed and die. It's the same thing here. You just need to break your own threshold and you'll be fine. Great. Um, cool. So yeah, just keep keep a tracker on those. Um, Do I have some resistance because I'm uh, a raging a alcoholic? Mind. or? <laughs> um, when, so the, the thing, just to make sure that we, we stay in the realm of this being a fun mechanic and not a, not a hassle, I'm going to say no, but it's only because you're drinking twice as fast as everyone else. <laughs> so you're when a we too say like, kind of guy. Yeah. When we say like a drink, you know, everyone takes a drink. It's like, I imagine it's like Queenie's like, oh boy. Uh, and mud butt. And if butthole were here, it'd be like, bup, 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 bup. ha, one drink. <laughs> yeah, my, my drink is the glass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so sorry. Uh, not when you hit four, tell me when you hit three. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, if you're playing along at home, if you're playing the home game, please have water. We love you. We want you to be safe. Have fun. <laughs> um, Okie dokie. Um, so uh, do you want to have a race now or do you want to have the race later? Oh, now. Now. Race now. Okay. And then I'm going to I'm going to uh, remember the uh, the rule that if you talk about the past, you need to drink. So it'd be like, uh, hey, butthole, why don't you tell me uh, what you used to be like as a kid? Drink, drink, drink. <laughs> I... <laughs> all right, so we all drink. We yep. all have a drink. What? Why do I have what? to drink? Because I said everyone rule. has to with the rule. That's the bachelor party rule, Laura. Oh, shit. Everybody I thought drinks. it was the person who talks about the past has to drink. No. Everybody does. Uh, yeah, that would have been, really, talk... been really clever if someone smarted. <laughs> It's not my fault no one helped me make up the game. Uh, but hold, if you just don't talk <laughs> about your past, then we don't have to drink. The but question I, is already asked. This, this is all just like in a one thing. It's not like he uh, asks and then I give an answer and everybody has. That'd be crazy. I don't want anybody to die. Also, no one drives I don't carts like these today. Rules. I've seen oh, so, what drunken cart driving does and it's bad. So you don't need to actually answer the question? Is this if I bring no, 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 up I'll, the past? I, I mean, That's these are. Insane. Mud, but this is your bachelor party. If you want to make oh. a rule that any time a question is asked, it must be answered. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I totally Ooh. asked you. I totally asked you. So that you, you now you got to do it. All right. So I so mean, yes. if there's one thing that we all know about me, it's and he like checks his sleeve and he's like, I don't like talking about my parents because my mom was nice, but my dad was terrible. Some people say my mom's evil, but who knows about that? And then I found Moonhammer. Oh, yeah, Moonhammer. What a great goddess. Really helping me with my pro-union views and my poop magic. <laughs> Classic butthole. <laughs> uh, everybody takes a drink. Um, we're going to say that uh, currently you are drinking um, some of Uncle Mudbutt's booze barns, um, uh, finest ale. So you're starting off, uh, it's 7 a.m., so it's it's not oh, a God. potent bevy. Um, it's... Uh, 
what uh, 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 toured with an improv troupe for a bit or a sketch troupe, and uh, they called them whatever beers. And it's just like, it's just a beer. It's a beer you have. It's not one you particularly want or need. It's not like, oh, this is a really fancy IPA I bought. It's the whatever beer. You're just like, I just need a beer. And then it just appears in your hand. Um, so just, uh, yeah, we're, we're starting, we're starting, starting low. Um, great. So the race is to be held in uh, New Winchester. Um, what, uh, Mudbutt, what is the prize? Uh, well, actually, sorry, this is a good question. And this is a, a question that you can legitimately answer. And then we'll, we'll craft what we're doing around that. Do you think that Mudbutt wants to be in charge of this bachelor party or does he want them to be in charge of it? Is this a, I planned myself a party, but now I need you all to run it? Or is it like, I came up with fun things for us to do? Because I could honestly see it playing either way because you care about your friends so much that I could see you being like, I want you guys to have fun. But I could also see you being like, well, you guys know me really well. I kind of want you to just do nice things. It can also uh, vary from event to event. We can change it up each time, but I'm just curious kind of where you're at with that. I mean, I, I think in general he wants to have the party thrown for him. So he wants things to happen to him, but he's he's aware enough that he's like, well, this is like my special day. So if I want something to happen, I'm just going to say that it happens. Okay. <laughs> so then um, since, Quinny, this is your game, um, what prize uh, can you offer to the winner of the race? Uh, Quinny will like... Just very quickly, summon forth uh, Frostbite just out of his hand. Draw a line in the dirt and be like, okay, we got our starting line and our finish line. One lap around and first pair to cross this line wins. Uh, and like just disappears um, Frostbite uh, and says, and the winner gets, and just kind of like reaches into Butthole's bag of holding. <laughs> like, uh, uh, and he pulls out, uh, oh, oh, some surgery tools from Ooh. our adventure with uh, what's his name? Dr. Moreau. <laughs> Dr. Moreau. They're written down as mojo tools. <laughs> they are mojo, mojo tools, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's pretty wild and fun for a, a bachelor party. Probably doesn't need to get any wilder than that, huh? No need to fight and kill a wizard, right? <laughs> hey, where did you get those tools from in the past? Drink, 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 drink! So oh, man. <laughs> All right, everyone. All right, for everyone listening, this is the water one for those of you yes, trying yes, to play along. Yes, yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, particularly if it's a gin drink, you know who you are. Um, I was going to say, Tom, I think everyone else just hit three. They did. Yeah. I know, man. Yeah. I was about to get there. So, um, Wait, when was the, the second one? We drank also one when, when the rule was made. Was like, yeah. We drank his last question. We drank this question. Oh, good three. Lord. Um, all right. So um, we are now adding a D3 uh, to all of your, your rolls. So when you roll a d20, I'm also going to need you to roll a d6. If you get uh, a one or a two, let me know. Otherwise, okay. no effect. Okay. Um, we're going to call that the drunk dice. Okay. Sweet. All right. So, um, yeah, cool. Um, Ser seriously, though, you, the rule is you have to tell him. How did, how did you get the tools? He wants to know. Uh, I care about my friends. I believe in the importance of contracts. Unions. Yes. Uh, Mudbutt, right. can you roll me um, a perception check, please? So roll the six as well, like the D6? Okay, so... Uh, yep. All right, so I got... All right. So if it's, I, if it's figuring me out, Tom, if I have advantage, should he have disadvantage, or how do we want to balance it? Ooh, yes, that is a good point. So sorry, Adam, roll your D20 twice, please, and pick the lower result. My lowest is seven. Okay. Uh, Smart I play, Ryan. I uh, rolled a three for my D6. Okay. And my perception... It's all right. At a, at a seven, I think it was plus one, so it, it won't matter. Um, you uh, you fail to notice that uh, Reginald is legitimately straight up asking what happened that time he was there at a thing. Um, but uh, I think you're just so excited about finding more out more about these mojo tools that you're... Uh, you're, you're just game to hear it. Uh, so, Quiddy, um, hey, what happened? Uh, well, uh, as you know, butthole, these are a trophy uh, that we claimed after defeating the uh, uh, so sort of mad scientist Dr. Moreau uh, in a temple on the island of uh, Cholt. Um, he, uh, he was making a 
zombie bear sharks, shark and bears is what we called them, uh, but also uh, bone monsters. And so, you know, well, that's crazy. Him, we were trying to basically figure out how to bring bring the ability to revive people back to the world. Man, yeah. I forgot we did that. Holy shit. You know, I can be a bone monster myself. <laughs> uh, cover your cover your ears, daughter. This is. Uh... <laughs> you got a fucking drink. <laughs> oh, that's because oh. it's the past. That's right. No, because you fucking call me daughter. Oh, that's the other okay. Rule. Son of a. Does everyone right. have to drink with that one, or is that just just him? him. Oh, I think it's uh, everybody. I think I ruined no, it for everybody. No, it's just you. I made the rule of just you. I don't right. know. He's got the prince's prerogative. Is it an everybody rule or just an Alan I, rule? I like the idea of it being a one, one-way one rule because I also don't want you to be rolling two d20s and then minusing the d20 from your results. So. This, also, this also isn't like my rule rule that everyone has to do. Like, this was just for my butt. I, 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 yeah. I think the Midnight Society has accepted yeah. that this is a if you say it, you must drink rule. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Mudbutt, let me know when you get to six. Gotcha. I'm at four right now. Before Um, the end of the race. Here's the thing. I I will say we will also be plateauing these. um, So because I don't want to interfere with the uh, the hijinks of making uh, characters drink. Um, But I, again, also don't want you just rolling like, okay, well, I I rolled 15, but my other D20 means I lose 17. So I'm at (laughs) minus two. Anyway, let's go to the hotel now. It's 7.30 a.m. and the game is essentially over. Uh, I've seen bachelor parties like that. Yeah, but they're not well, on the like, audio medium. <laughs> once you get to like very drunk day drinking, you just sort of say the same drunk. I believe it. I, exactly. So we'll be plateauing it here and there. But uh, yeah, just just keep keep me in the loop because uh, I I'm not going to track it because fantasy world and such. Great. Okay. So uh, in order to win uh, Doctor Moreau's Mojo Tools, uh, you must win the race. Uh, this is going to be a foot race. Now, Quinny, um, as you described it, uh, you rode around on Mudbutt's shoulders, guiding him with horns. Is this a on your shoulders race, or is this a uh, four people on the ground race? It's 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 on your shoulders race. Yeah. Okay. So given that you and Mudbutt are clearly a team, uh, Alan and Reginald, who rides on the shoulders? I think realistically I, you're going up. I am obviously. <laughs> Great. And then I just pick Alan up, but instead of sitting on my shoulders, I pick her up fireman style. <laughs> like, ah. All right. Um, and uh, Quinny, you hop up on um, Mudbutt's shoulders. Um, uh, Tiana comes out and it's just like, starting early, I see. Okay, well, um, she goes to the, the line in the sand and um, she's like, no, muddy buddy, I... I Told you I would never do this, but it's your bachelor party, and I want you to have the best day. And I know how much you love the traveling stage play, the Fast and the Furious franchise. I so, do. <laughs> and then she drops her robe, and she's wearing tiny booty shorts. Oh, God. And, like, a, like, Who shiny shirt. Woman? And she looks so uncomfortable. Uh, but she's, like... <clears throat> she's uncomfortable. Leans down, and she's, like... <laughs> And go! And then she just fires Mage Hand into the air, uh, fires um, uh, Magic Missile in the air, and just a bunch of them explode uh, in the sky to signal the start of the race. So oh, what I'm going to need is dexterity saves from the drivers, <laughs> and I'm going to need athletics checks from uh, the vehicles. Oh, all right. So that's a 15 dex save. Yep. And my, my D6 so didn't trigger. I need athletics? Uh, no, uh, you're a driver, so you're, you're, you're using on my head steering. steering. Yeah. I see. But you're also being fireman carried, so I think it's it's more like you awkwardly like yeah. wiggling and shuffling to try and make him move in different directions. Um, okay. Reginald, you are spectacularly good at running away from things. Yes. So I'm going to give you advantage on this because this is kind of your huckleberry. <laughs> cool. I got a dirty 20 for my athletics check. Cool. And uh, how'd your drink die turn out? I'm not going to ask every time. I just want to remind people to do it. Oh, oh. I, I I have double, so not, I'm not there yet. Okay, great. Um, uh, all right. I got I got an eight on the D20 and a one on the drink die. Okay, cool. Um, so sorry, Laura, what did you roll? You rolled an eight? Eight, yeah. yeah okay. What, what do you ne- add to it, Laura? Sorry, uh, I rolled a seven. And so you add one to make it an dex. eight? 
Got it. Um, yeah, and then oh. I rolled a one on the drink die. Okay, uh, roll that d6 again. Four. Uh, okay, so now you rolled a four. Um, because you start trying to give directions, and um, already the world is is spinning a bit. Plus, you're being fireman carried, so you're on on your side. You also didn't have breakfast, so you're like, this is this is not a, a great <laughs> deal. And you just, I think you're also just dealing with the the image of uh, your mom being like a nameless race starter from um, Fast and the Furious. Oh yeah, that was gross. And like, <laughs> admittedly, like you're actually like kind of proud of her for for stepping outside her comfort zone, and like she's rocking it. But like, also you just you 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 you've, you've never seen your mom in booty shorts, and that was yeah. The fact that she owns them is more upsetting than the fact that she was in them. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're a relic. Ogma's secret beauty shorts available <laughs> to anyone running a temple of Ogma. There's one pair. Yeah, the, it's Whoa. the sisterhood of the traveling booty shorts. Um, all right, so uh, Mudbutt, what did you roll from your athletics, please? Um, so I rolled a 17, and I have plus 8 for athletics. You take <laughs> off like a fucking shot. Also, admittedly, I feel like you've run this course a few times. I know oh, Quinny yeah. set it up, but, like, it's not your first time running around Winchester. Um, Quinny, what about you? What did you get? Uh, that was a 15 on the deck save uh, and uh, a 3 on the d6, so nothing there. Okay, so, um, Reginald, you are off like a shot. Um, however, um, Alan is, like, weirdly, like, uh, kind of, like, groaning in in discomfort about her mom and, like, wiggling a bit. So, uh, when you run, you don't normally bring people with you. That's not a thing you do. So, this is actually a huge <laughs> He's leaving them behind. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm fighting every instinct I have to not throw her and run fast. 100%. Like, that's my whole battle. So, you're, you're doing, like, the, the awkward, like, stumble run, uh, whereas Mudbutt is just, like, off and going. Um... Quinny, did you ask him to install the horns for this, or are you guiding him with the top hat? Oh, that's right. I forgot he's wearing a top hat. Uh, so no, I wouldn't ask him to install the horns or anything like that. It'll it'll just be he can just impromptu. screw them on. It's not a it's not a huge. Uh, sure then. Yeah, let's throw them on there. So it's like I've got motorcycle hand. And yeah, horns. <laughs> yeah you, you turn the horns down so it's more like yeah. a motorcycle. Um, Mudbutt, what are you what are you yelling as you run? I feel like Mudbutt doesn't run quietly. Um. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just running like, this is the best party ever. <laughs> um, great. Um, uh, you, uh, you run past, uh, uh, Mike is, uh, is just kind of, uh, waking up, um, with, uh, with his arm around, um, uh, Grandpa Warwick, uh, in the bar and he's like, oh, oh, it's starting already. Okay, sorry, bud. And he kind of, like, pushes uh, Grandpa Warwick onto the bar. They kind of, like, did that, like, fall asleep holding each other thing people do at bars. And he's like, okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Back to it. Um, and he just goes and starts <laughs> pouring drinks at the off chance he'll need them. Um, uh, Grandpa Warwick uh, continues to snore contentedly. Hmm. Um, so, uh, you pass the first gate, which is uh, just a big tree. Just... A very fucking big tree. Uh, and Mudbutt, you, you see that you've passed Big Tree. You're one third of the way there. And uh, currently, you guys are well ahead. Uh, give me another set of rolls, please. Uh, save again for the, the rider? Yep. So that's a dirty 20 for Quinny, but he rolled oh a one on the d6. Okay, so roll a d6 again, please, sir. Roll the d6. Yep. It's a six. Six? Okay, so you got a 14. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, so I, I rolled a 13 plus eight, so that's 21. Mm -hmm. um, and then I roll my d6? Um, or no? Have you rolled a d6 yet? Oh. Okay, so roll a d6, okay. and if you get a one or a two, then you'll be rolling to take things away. Six. You're good. You're good. All right. All right. Morning drinking a... is just a Tuesday for mud, but this is <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. I got a dirty 20 and a two. Roll that dice. Yeah. <laughs> also a two. Okay. So 18, still very solid. Right. Uh, Reginald, what do you got? Uh, I rolled a 24 for athletics. Nice. Very good. Um, <clears throat> all right. So um, you find uh, Team uh, Butthole and Alan uh, catches up um, on this lap. Um, uh -oh. It's that uh, Reginald um, 
is so afraid that he's going to get found out and there will be consequence that the idea of you having some mystical bullshit he just learned about that sounds spooky is not ideal for him. So he is now running with the speed of someone just fucking terrified that these tools will somehow hurt him. Um, Alan, you, um, you're still feeling it, but um, you're starting to get like a, like a, a bit of a, a bit of a better sense of this. What uh, what inspirational uh, stuff do you start muttering already a little buzzed to Reginald? Um, I feel like you're more I, of a coach than an actual driver at this point. It's like it's like Reginald, don't 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 worry about it. Just do your best, and if we if we fall behind, I'll just fucking dimension door us to the end. <laughs> It'll be great. You're doing great. You don't even have to worry. No stress. No stress. Um, Reginald, a fistful of fingers <laughs> appears on your shoulder and gives you a thumbs up. And I panic sprint forwards, trying to shake it off my shoulder. <laughs> Great. Uh, all right. Final lap. Uh, we're coming up on the, the ending. You're actually running through Winchester now. So this is the town lap. Um, there are two. Um, there's like a gnome and an orc carrying a giant pane of glass um, and uh, a dwarf just like pushing a just a, a full like barrel cart full of apples uh, that you need to avoid. Um, go ahead and roll your checks one more time, please. I got a seven. Uh, 26, and then I rolled a one, so I'll roll a subtraction now. Minus five, so 21 still. <laughs> nice. You're a fucking monster. <laughs> <laughs> so dexterous. Uh, I got total 27. I rolled a 19 with an eight, but then I rolled a one, so I got to roll again. Yep. Okay. And then subtract Just whatever that ro- is. Roll, from roll the d6 only. Ooh, five. Okay, so, so you're at 23. 23. 20, 22, did I say? Yeah, yeah 22. 22, sorry. Um, Brand, all I, right. Sorry, go ahead, Ryan. I rolled a 19, so. Cool. Um, all right, so all of you are, are, are just, like, sprinting towards the finish line. Um, uh, Mudbutt, you just, like, kind of put your head down to run through the glass. Quinny, you hide behind the, uh, the top hat. Luckily, it's built of armor, <laughs> so um, it explodes, like, the glass explodes. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> You hear uh, the gnome and the orc be like, we did what you said, Mr. Mudbud. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> um, and uh, the um, uh, Reginald, you just full on like track and field leaping over a gate, like arc over this uh, barrel of apples. Um, Alan, um, you see um, uh, uh, tracks just giving you like the double thumbs up. Um, you see mm. Dexter just kind of like, completely um, stone-faced, like, sipping at coffee and just going, mm. um, mm-hmm. you, uh, you land, uh, Leanna's cheering for you, Kron is throwing body parts in the air in, in excitement uh, out of his, his bag, <clears throat> and um, uh, you're neck and neck as, the t- as all of you rush to the end. Um, here's my question, Reginald and Alan, and like obviously this is a conversation you'd be whisper muttering. Um, actually, no, never mind. You wouldn't even say it. Just I need to know what both of you want to do, and then we'll see how it works out. Do you let him win because it's his bachelor party? At this rate, you're going to be basically in a tie situation. So, Reginald, you're the one actually running. Yes. Would you try and win? Or no. would you you'd let no, him no, win? No, no, no. He would throw it. I feel like Reginald has had to do a bunch of competitions with people who are his superior, and he's always had to lose. He's not aware he can try to win a race. Uh, on that note, um, we've we've talked off air about your your great rival, uh, uh, Declan Albrecht, um, son of Glassstaff, uh, your rival commander. Do you did you ever throw it for him, or did you try oh, no, and beat him, and no. he would always win? Yeah, he always won. That one was the most infuriating because it's the only race I was theoretically allowed to win. Gotcha. Okay, great, great, great. Good, thank you. Um, Okay, so he's going to throw it. Um, Alan, you just talked about using Dimension Dawn to try and cheat and win. Um, You realize it's going to be a tie. What do you do? And I'm just like, Reginald, what are you doing? Like, pick it up. Pick it up. Oh, I'm so busy (laughs) farting, it's hard to run. Moonhammer, and then I just sort of slow and pretend to stagger a little. Uh, can I tell he's pretending? Roll an insight check. Alan's greatest skill, insight. I have great insight, man. Yeah, I don't know your stats anymore because you've been in a different system for like two years. 
Anything um, int-based, she's going to annihilate. Yeah, roll 2d6 and add whatever the fuck starts with that number. Um, okay, cool. It's 23, yeah. Yeah, so you can tell he's actively trying to fall back. Um, okay. Alan, then I'm I, like, I, I think I would have enjoyed winning, but like, I don't want to express my pettiness outright. I, I think you also will <laughs> say with that insight roll, because it was very high, um, you do also remember that he mentioned that his name was the Butcher of Winchester, and there might be some un, some stories that you don't necessarily yeah. have yet in some context. Also, admittedly, he's doing a pretty good job of pretending to be butthole. I can't run because I'm <laughs> farting too much. Moonhammer. That's very impressive. Honestly, I that's pretty... I forgot for a minute. Yeah, exactly. So I think in, in recognizing that he's actually trying to do his best, uh, you kind of let this happen, and um, Mudbutt and Quinny, uh, you race across the finish line and yeah. win. Uh, and Kron, uh, who is a, uh, a druid that you haven't met, um, I guess you've, you've probably met uh, everyone by this point, uh, Mudbud, but he's part of kind of the uh, the Dum Dums crew now. Um, he okay. just like th- reaches into his bag of holding and just like throws up a bunch of like fingers and hands and <laughs> shit from various monsters uh, that rain down upon you um, as, as you, you claim victory. Um, now, here's the question. Both of you won, and there's only one prize. So how do you determine who actually gets it? I just give it to to Mudba. <laughs> He's like, yeah, <laughs> here. Right. yeah. Here so you go, Mudba, man. Congratulations. You receive a. Uh, we've been calling them Mojo Tools because Doctor Moreau was like a Mojo motherfucker uh, from X Men who was riding around on like a platform with a bunch oh, of like sweet. spindly claws, and his whole deal was that he was uh, creating like weird monster hybrids. So this is basically, if you imagine, like, a bunch of shit you would find on Mojo World or, like, attached to his thing. It's essentially, like, a multifunctional, like, it's got, um, like, those little spindle fingers and, like, uh, scalpels and, like, all basically things you would need to do really elaborate, weird, creepy You Mojo have a Dr. Surgery. Frankenstein kit now. Yep. Yeah, um, all right. <laughs> so just keep that in mind because that's just a thing you have for the rest of this adventure now. All right, Doctor. What do we Frankenstein kit? Uh, yeah, you can call it a Frankenstein kit. You can call it Mojo Tools. Uh, it's whatever you want. Incidentally, this was Cross one of the rare times list. where I made a random comic book reference in a session you weren't in. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's a huge bummer for me that uh, that we're just getting to this now. Um, okay, great. So having uh, completed the race, um, there's there's much celebration. Um, uh, King Quimby, looking around, um, <laughs> you. You're like you hand the tools off. You never really cared about these things. It's weird to be given away butthole stuff, but on the other hand, like Mudbutt has been an ally for a long time. Um, but reflected in the faces of your crew, um, you actually see just kind of uh, for the first time in a long time joy. Everyone is uh, ecstatic and laughing, and um, you know, stone faced in Dexter's case, but like. You can tell that everyone is actually legitimately enjoying this, and it's something that you as a leader haven't really had any ability to give them to this point, but um, for the first time you see everyone relax a little bit, and even though you know this is going to be um, a bit of a wild adventure, um, you're relieved to see that that this is still possible for this crew, and also um, you're noticing how everyone seems to have really kind of started to act as, as a family and as a team. Um, for a long time, even though you had the ship and everything else, the dum-dums really were just, you know, the four of you. Um, and now, well, five of you when Bucky was still kicking around. Um, but now (laughs) the rest of the rest of the team starts to sort of come together in a really nice way. Um, and honestly, this would be a great way to end the day. But you know Mudbutt's not going to let that happen. So it's 7.30, <laughs> like you said. Like, yeah. So yeah, yeah, we, we made it a, to 8 a.m. A brief moment <laughs> of that. Um, but uh, then it's time to go. So Mudbutt, you uh, you look at your, your crinkled, dirty paper, um, the itinerary, and um, you remember that you booked uh, some fancy fucking transport for all of you uh, as Ooh. you know a big part of bachelor parties are like getting a limo for no reason and then just sitting in traffic being like we're in a nice car that people are looking at it doesn't go anywhere because <laughs> we're in a city um so uh here's the thing the hotel you've booked is far away from here because you wanted somewhere glamorous uh basically fantasy vegas where you could actually like cut loose um so 
you're gonna you have um essentially a one use uh teleport scroll that'll get you to the place where you're gonna like load up and continue on your journey um so two questions for you and adam i frequently throw this uh, just to warm up your improv brain i'm gonna frequently be asking like what did mud butt buy um so okay. just be ready um what uh what fantastical transportation did you book for the party Oh, it's like a stretch uh, cart that's yep. like pull, pulled by like <laughs> oxen that uh, are have like oxen tuxedos on, and um, <laughs> there's and riding the oxen are like two uh, two clowns, uh, <laughs> and they have wow. and they have they have like an endless supply of sparklers that they are uh, always like sparkling. Love that. Um, what is uh, what are the names of the clowns? Uh, the, the, the clown's names, there's, um, uh, Jeffrey, uh, Bartholomew Stevenson, and the second clown <gasps> is, his name is, yeah! <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, okay. okay, so you... Let's all write those names down. You're gonna uh, need no. to remind me what their names are. <laughs> I write everything down, man. It's all good, brother. I, I got right. you back. Um... Having now run enough of these games in like all of our systems where I will just say a name and then promptly forget it. And then occasionally now look at character sheets that you guys wrote and be like, oh, that's the <laughs> name of that planet. Um, I'm with you. I got you. Um, so great. Um, now, when you say a stretch cart, uh, can you tell me a bit more about this cart? Is it uh, open topped? Is it like is it like a limo that's made of wood on like cartwheels that has like. Hey, is it open topped? Is it closed? What do you imagine this this thing is? It's um, uh, it's kind of like you know, like the Pioneer kind of like uh, mm -hmm. thing. So there's like a tarp on top, okay, uh, but with like little windows that you could look mm -hmm. out, and there's like the most comfortable hay that you've ever had, and it's just lined with like apple and pork barrels and like barrels of more um of like the really good stuff, which is just wine. And, uh, cool. yeah. And there's another, right. and there's another clown in there and he's, he's there to also have, uh, sparkles and his name is Kevin. Great. There's three clowns. Add, add my third clown note yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At, at that point it was like, you know, well, you, you've booked the two clown package and for an additional 40 gold, we could kick in a third clown. And um, then you'll have it. It's really, yeah. It, it just means you'll have it in case you need them. And you know, it, you can serve your own drinks like a chump, or you can give us 40 gold and feel like a hero. Yeah. Um, okay, fantastic. So um, you gather you gather the crew together. Uh, everyone is wearing their uh, Mud Buddies shirts. Um, everyone has their uh, their barrel backpacks and their, their flagon on their, their hip. Um, uh, Alan, you, you share a look with your mom, who's now like back in her sort of comfortable robes. And, um, she, uh, she looks at you and there's still obviously that, that kind of tension, mm -hmm. uh, between you. Um, but just as the, uh, the teleport scroll fires off, you just see her say like, mouth, like take care of him. Um, and, uh. <laughs> It's weird because in the entire history of knowing your mom, she's never actually uh, given you any task with responsibility. It's always been like, this is too hard. Don't do this. This is too powerful. I don't, like, essentially, it's always been, on, I don't trust you. You're a child. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. um, so that strikes you as a bit odd. Um, Reginald and Quinny, is there anything you're, you're looking to do or, or see just before the teleport scroll goes off? I don't think so in particular, just kind of like, <laughs> I think he's almost afraid to ask, like, how are we going to even find this wizard? Um, all taken care of, baby. It's all Yeah, good. that's the thing. It's, it's like he's afraid to ask. Like, it's all gotcha, on you the list. tied up in a basement somewhere, <laughs> and it's just like a snuff situation. <laughs> just say, is it horrifying? Reginald is just making sure that he has every weapon he owns with him because he's not sure if he has to fight a wizard or mud butt mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. both or if he should run. And if he should run, then he can just throw it all on the ground and take off. Right before the uh, trigger portals... Uh, Jesus, portal triggers. 
Wah, 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 wah. Um, coming around uh, the side of the um, uh, Uncle Mudbutt's booze barn, you see uh, Donkey Jr. and Goblin Jr., who are kind of like leaning against each other. Um, <sighs> and uh, you, you see like a knocked over uh, bowl uh, of booze. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you've seen, you've seen Donkey Jr. drunk before, and this is, like, on point. I mean, sometimes he he gets into his cups when he talks about the Donkey Wars. Um, you don't understand what he's saying necessarily, but, like, you get a vague sense of it, and it sounded like it was a real rough time. Um, but, uh, they both kind of come stumbling out and start walking towards you as the the portal begins to form. Um, and then you see Donkey Jr. kind of nudge Goblin Jr., who, like, just kind of, like, looks at him and puts a paw up on him and then kind of stumbles up to you and um, he just kind of looks up at you swing ever so slightly and then just goes snarf snarf and then he just nuzzles your hand in a you got this kind of way Um, and behind him Donkey Jr. looks on like nodding as if something incredibly significant has happened Um, and then uh, Goblin Jr. just kind of like nods to you and then he gets up on his hind legs grabs his two hammers and just like hammer dances away as butthole taught him to do for official formal things and like donkey jr is loving this like he is just he hawing away um adam donkey jr is a miniature donkey that uh occasionally reginald rides um (laughs) thank you and uh so (laughs) goblin jr is just doing his little like official like parade march uh, and Donkey Jr. loves that. And then the two of them kind of slump together um, contentedly as uh, the portal consumes you. Um, there was a flash of light and a, a feeling of um, if you've ever been on uh, solid ground that shifts suddenly or just you, kind of your internal sense of balance just gets thrown for a, for a hot second. It's that um, sometimes this happens in VR, which is weird. But like you, you all kind of have a sense of being moved. Even uh, Alan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, Alan! You're more used to it. I do this it's... shit a lot, but usually I'm the one controlling it. <laughs> For sure, and and a distinction I kind of want to draw about like spell scrolls is that they're like they're not the greatest version of this, you know? Like they're they're the instant coffee of spells. They're not particular. Mm. Like they'll get the job done, but it's not a it's not good. Um, so yeah, you're you're a little more solid, uh, but you're also a little bit buzzed. So um, the ground kind of shakes beneath you. Um, and, uh, you find yourselves in Waterdeep, um, the, the grand city of Waterdeep. Um, it is, uh, one of the greatest cities in all of, uh, Faerun, um, somewhere that I think Quinny, even you probably haven't been, you, you, you've certainly done Neverwinter, but, um, Waterdeep was kind of, uh, just a little too far away. Uh, Reginald, uh, Waterdeep is like the stronghold of the Alliance. So this is real spooky for you. And I think even though you're aware that you're not in your world, it's still really disorienting. Like in like weird modern COVID times, it would be like if if suddenly a stranger hugged you and you'd be like, ah, and you're like, oh, wait, this is a world where COVID doesn't exist. But like, uh, don't care for this. Um, so it's uh, but it's also you're a bit taken aback because it's nice here. There's no battalions. There's no reinforcement. It's not a fortress. It's just a, a city. Uh, going about its business. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Mudbutt, you you look around, um, and I think you've been to Waterdeep kind of in your travels, but it was, you know, just a place you've been. Uh, and you see a um, a clown holding up a sign uh, that says uh, King Mudbutt. And it's, the, the king is crossed out, um, but clearly they weren't going to uh, do another sign. He's, uh, he's smoking like a comic, like giant cigar that's exploded at the end. <laughs> um and uh he's just like hey uh you uh you mud butt yes i am are, are you are, are you part of uh, are you part of my uh multiple clown package that i purchased <laughs> uh yeah yeah i'm the bonus clown who meets you at the uh the teleport drop off uh, uh yep um uh ryan what's the name of this clown a uh, bonkers <laughs> yep. Yay. Name's Bonkers. Uh, Bonkers the Clown. Um, you might meet other people at other clown depots named Bonkers. Uh, it's a very common name because people like meeting clowns named Bonkers. Um, 
I'm really not happy to see you. I've, I've, uh, I've been coming here every day <laughs> for about a year. It's, uh... <laughs> Very it's nice that you finally joined us today. Expensive <laughs> fucking package. Yeah, I, well, I don't feel listen, bad. We, part we of the have package. a, you know, we we run a we run a tight clown ship. <laughs> so we, if we say we're gonna meet you at the teleport depot, we fucking meet you. Well, I uh, hope you guys have a union. Am I right? Yes, sir. We do. Thank you. For, that's very strange that you bring that up, but uh, by uh, yeah, we we do. It's um. Well, you know, I find a way to jam it into most conversations. Uh, and then Reginald just turns and winks at Quinny. Quinny's like, good, but dial it back a little. Yeah, I'm part of Local Clown 52. It's uh, the local clown union for this district. Well, hello, blue friend. Because his face makeup's blue. And then I just kiss him on the mouth. Classic I don't like it either, butthole. but I do it. <laughs> And uh, he tastes, uh, he's been smoking this cigar. The cigar, like his mouth tastes like an ashtray. Not like he's been smoking, but like he ate an ashtray. <laughs> yeah, Rachel just does back. He's like, mmm, c- cigar. It's, it's like the fart of the mouth, I guess. <laughs> That's actually the name of this brand. We go in for the cheap gags here at Clown Co. Ha uh, ha. <laughs> um, here's a here's a question since Reginald is an entirely new character we don't know much about um, how much kissing has Reginald done in his time uh, not a lot because to have a relationship you have to let someone sleep in the same room as you and assassination is a very effective way to work your way up in the horde which is a very generally sex positive but dangerous place mm-hmm. so he's just seen a lot of people start dating people or sleeping with people only to be murdered by them and take their role so i would say he's more scared of sexuality or thinks it's a trap <laughs> than anything else that also kind of tracks cool. with like um uh ryan and i've been referring to it off air as like grim Faerun. um that tracks with kind <laughs> of the the grim Fe- uh, grimaca logic of like you don't know your mom, your dad's like a horrific misogynist, a cause horrifically misogynistic, and then suddenly you join an army of like kind of all like um, gender identities and sexual identities. And it's, it's you're literally just the kid from the small town who didn't realize there was anything else. So suddenly it's like, oh, no, there's lots of people I'm attracted to and I'm worried they'll murder me. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, he, he's attracted to most people if not everyone like i think he's definitely pan but it's all just feels like a trick but he's also like surprise he's, pan because he just didn't have any options before and suddenly it's like oh there's things beyond war yeah Don't know it turns out do. he's just not attracted to like bigots and zealots what a weirdo <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so uh so this is both like a, a horrible but also like educational experience for you um and again reginald uh, one of the things i think um it's gonna be real fun for you and i to explore ryan as we 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 kind of deal with this character is uh in a lot of ways he's a tourist uh who's like immigrated to a new country that's like actually super nice because you're used to like grim dark Faerun, and now suddenly you're in kind of like everything's slightly nicer Faerun. so yeah let's keep kind of finding these weird culture shock places uh, for him to live because, you know, it's nice not being in the grim dark town. Also, what happens in butthole stays in butthole. Like it's there's no <laughs> Reginald here. <laughs> Only Zool. Um, okay, great. So uh, after you finish kissing the clown, uh, you come away <laughs> with like a bluish like goatee in your red beard, and um, yeah, Mudbutt laughs about classic butthole and um, uh, bonkers. Uh, the uh, disaffected clown. Um, just like immediately and almost too fast to see does like a hexadecimal wave over his face and suddenly the blue is back. Um, and, uh, he's just like, uh, you know, like he sees Alan's reaction and he's like, this happens more than you think. Um, I've gotten very good at replacing the blue around my lips. All right, let's go. Um, and he, uh, he guides you, um, <clears throat> kind of for lack of a better term to the edge of town. <laughs> where there's a small uh, depot set up, uh, and you can see a number of, uh, there's like tuxedoed oxen, there's like quintillion dress oxen, um, there's just like a couple oxen in armor, there's a couple oxen in like costumes. Uh, one of them is wearing Forsaken gear, which really trips Alan and Quinny out a bit. 
Um, and um, he's like, all right, let me check which package you got. Ah, yes, the fancy cart package. Very good, monsieur. Um, <laughs> and uh, he leads you over uh, to the cart, and uh, you can see him yelling like, Hey, Jeffrey Bartholomew Stephen, Gah! Kevin! <laughs> Put your pants and makeup on! Yeah, he finally showed up! He's like, all right, we'll be ready in a couple minutes. Um... Yeah, we look over and see three bottomless guys with their dicks out with no makeup on (laughs) scrambling away from a fire. (laughs) Yeah, but it's it's a little bit like firefighters, uh, except that there's no verticality to this. So instead, they just like climb sideways along a pole while people dress them. Uh, It's a really ineffective method, but they do it. Very strange. Um, And he's like, listen, low clown 52 has got some weird rules, but that's what being in a union means. Sometimes you just do weird shit. Anyway, I hope you enjoy your magical journey to, uh... And then he, like, pulls up the sheet. He's like, oh, shit, you're going to Oasis, huh? That is quite the hotel. Oh, yes, it is. I've only heard good things. Um... Uh, Quinny. <laughs> you died there. Yeah. I yeah. Just make, it's that Oasis. It okay, surely yeah. is. Uh... That's where Alan had her first kiss. Isn't it? Also true. Uh, hey, so, yeah, Qu- what? hey, Quinster, uh, why the long face? Did something bad happen at Oasis in your past? Drink, 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 oh, drink. Oh, man, it's time for us to drink and then hear Quinny tell his story. Uh. All right, I'm on four. I think we're all on four. Just I'm not going to yeah. track him. I, I, I trust you all to get That's right. You just want us to know when we hit... Let you know when we hit six. Well, basically, I I, I can just let you know on the mechanic because I think you're all kind of getting it. Um, Your dice will upgrade as you go. So currently you're on a D3. Once you hit six, you'll be on a D6. And so on and so forth, kind of up up the chain. Okay. Um, Also, uh, uh, sorry, I'll interject. Uh, For characters like Alan, who getting shit-faced isn't really their jam, and actually Quinny, I guess, to, to some extent as well, um, you could also attempt to secretly chug waters and or fantasy Gatorades mm. as you go. Um, you'll just need to tell me when you think you can get away with yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Uh, because the, very much the vibe we're going for, as uh, I'm sure all of you have, have experienced at some point somewhere along the way, is like, it's one of those bachelor parties where A, it's genetically engineered to get out of control. B... A few of you are at a slightly different kind of place in your life than the people who are like, let's go hard. But it would feel like a party foul to break this up. So the goal is going to be, how can you secretly like take care of yourself and your friends when they are insistent on oblivion, which Mudbutt most assuredly is. So just keep eyes out for like, I'm not going to prompt you, but if we're, for example, walking through a food court, you can be like, I roll a stealth check to go get a burger real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so sorry, Tom, how does it work? You said we upgrade. So when you but... hit, uh, when you hit six, yeah. um, you'll move off of a D3 onto a D6. Mm-hmm. So what that will mean is a one to three will trigger the adverse effect and it's still just a D6. However, once you hit eight, you're moving on to a D8 and so on and so forth. The idea being And so that it's one to... On a D8, what's it? One to what? One, uh, one to four. Okay. So the idea is that the drunker you get, the higher... So again, I'm trying to steal the hunger mechanic yeah. without having you roll two D20s. But the idea okay. is the drunker you get, the higher your intoxication dice gets. Meaning that the odds of you having to subtract a massive amount from your die massive rolls that. gets more and more dangerous. That yeah, said, yeah, yeah. if you're able to sneak some provisions to knock that down a bit... You can degrade your dice back to kind of where where you would rather. Cool, they cool, be. cool. Okay. Yep, cool. Thank you. No worries. Uh, I will also say the higher the dice gets, uh, the crazier the effect will be. Currently, it is just minusing from your roll. Oh no. Okay. I'm just saying we might get a messy <laughs> successy in this game, which would be a first, oh, no. and I'm very excited about it. So, <laughs> I'm buckle up, there. buckaroos. <laughs> um, okay. So. Um, Quinny, you've been tasked with explaining why uh, the Oasis Hotel might be an issue for you. Uh, yeah, um, the Oasis is where they were hosting the Thiefies, as they were called at the time. Now they're called the Quinnies. 
sort of an in memoriam kind of honorific. Uh, I won the big thiefy there uh, and was uh, very, very, very subsequently killed. Uh, so it's kind of a wait. So if you died, how are you alive? How the fuck does that I, work? Got better, Mud. But uh, this is also a question you have. This is insane. This is very different from from what yeah. you remember, because um, you came in at a much happier time in the show. <laughs> so like, so so like, killed as in like you you were just like not killed because you're because you're alive. Or did you do like a really good stand up five minutes and the crowd was like super into it? So oh, you, that makes you more killed. sense. Yeah. No, someone with a sword stabbed me and I exploded. Well, who the hell Maybe did that? Maybe it would be best. Um, mm. <laughs> we talked about it, actually. Oh, it's a magic show. Oh, I get it. And then you reform yes. in the box. I've seen that before. Honestly, yeah, that's the easier way to go. Yeah, I reformed in a box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Alan, you're not great at subtlety. So something I would like no, you... No, this is Alan literally laughing. No, I didn't, no, 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 no I, I'm well aware. Um, okay, good. But uh, something I want to flag for you, um, just as we continue mm -hmm. on this, uh, as you've probably determined, this is going to be a largely social combat for a <laughs> bit. Um, something I want to force on you as a player is if you think Alan would clarify awkwardly, I would encourage you to do so. Okay, If you yeah. were if we're in an, and I may occasionally ask you to rule hey, not get to. get me more drunk. But, well, for example, so far you've kind of been on, on Reginald's ass about things that have happened. Uh, yeah. Quitty's being uh, yeah. nice and subtle about it. Would you lean over and be like, it was you? Uh, not yet. Okay. But give it a few more drinks. and Understandably. Okay, great. Just wanted so to flag I'm that for you. Thank you. Wow, you really oversold. I was a volunteer at a magic show, weirdo. Oh, Reginald, let's not step <laughs> into this one. Step it? What? I don't. Oh, oh, don't worry. There's no oxen shit here. I'm fine. Um, oh my God, it's like buttholes back. <laughs> Adam, uh, I need you to roll me a perception check, please, because uh. Alan just called Reginald Reginald, and that's new. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can disadvantage I, that one I? either. <laughs> Uh, Shit. Laura didn't even notice. Perception. I know. Occasionally, Laura and Alan are like <laughs> a Venn diagram. It's, we, are, it's we are closer than I'd like to admit. <laughs> so I, I rolled a 14. Do I roll my d6? Yes, please. And that's a 1. Okay, so roll the d6 again. You might get away with it. 4. So it's a okay. 10. Um, so, Mudbutt, um, Alan just called Butthole Reginald. Is Butthole's real name Reginald? Is is your real name Reginald? Oh, bird! I'm gonna call you Reggie. Uh, Reggie oh man, that's Reggie gonna be B. so hard for me to deal with. Nah, I've always wanted to be called Reginald. You know what? Let's just go with Reginald. I feel like it's a step in the right direction. All right, uh, Reggie. Woo woo. Yeah, Reginald. And Reggie, I, I send, Reggie. I send Quinny a message. Uh, in his brain that only he can hear. And it's just like, That's honestly, alarming. it's probably better this way. How do you do that? That's wild. I have I have the message cantrip now. So <laughs> basically, I can just like point my finger at someone and whisper something that only they can hear. All right. Convenient. Uh, so this, is, this is a cloak like, of the bat. Baba Yaga. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> uh, she says, yes, dear. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. Okay. This is a fun adventure this chapter's full of levity, so you're oh, cool. Oh, by um, the way, you can also reply to me, uh, like, once that speaking? only I can hear. Okay. You, uh, Quinny, in your head, uh, after you, you hear that, you also hear, um, Quinny, dear, um, why is your eye turning redder? Well, I don't know. You're my magical patron. Has that never happened before? You, I remember you had a big old bag of eyes. Well, um, yeah. Are, are you are you getting drunk? I mean, I'm fine. I'm not drunk. I can. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Quinny, dear, I tell you what. Um, <laughs> things have been a bit quiet out in 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 my neck of the woods uh, literally and figuratively um that goblin queen is doing a tremendously good job uh which uh is disappointing i'd hope for more hijinks but um in the meantime i tell you what 
Um, I will, if you're off on an adventure, I will grant you a boon if you can get someone to sign the contract which you will find in your pocket. Come on, lady. Uh... So you're happy, uh, Quinny, to find when you open the contract that it's not a sell your soul to me. This isn't like a Manny level bullshit. It's a uh, give up two years of your life uh, to gain a tremendous power for them. So if you can find someone on this uh, adventure who wants that, and if you're ethically okay with doing it, then uh, Baba Yaga will grant you a boon. Up to you. It just lives in your pocket now. Oh my god. Baba Yaga, why why do you want this? Uh, honey, I, I know you don't quite understand the warlock thing, but um, I'm bored, and I just... I want some years, you know? There are some wrinkles under my ears that I am not a fan of, and I would just like them to go away. And if I had a couple of mortal years pledged to me, I could just tighten that up just a little bit, you know. You know how it goes. So, um, simple pact, not a big deal, and they get to go free afterwards. It's fine. All right, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll get right on it, I say, as I, like, stuff this contract into, like, the furthest reaches of the bag of holding. <laughs> Hey, what cool. was that paper that you just pulled out? Paper? I like paper. Yeah, what what you got there, <laughs> Quinny? Yeah, is that something we can sign? What's paper? <laughs> <laughs> I got a pen. He's uh, already got a pen, and it's his bachelor party, so I think maybe you should stop, you know, holding out on this. What's uh, what's up with your secret paper? That's right, Reginator. Woo, Reggie, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Reggie, Reggie, the Bane. I mean, it's fine. It's and then, I, like, I sized to Alan, he's like, I'm going to have a real problem not saying the Bane of Winchester if we start chanting Reggie. I just want to be clear. Uh, Reginald, ah, you do remember fuck. your entire, like, army chanting that. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, it, it's almost a knee-jerk reaction now. It's, uh, it's, it's nothing. It's, um, it's, uh, it's a contract, uh, certifying that the person who signs it, uh, will remain sober for the rest of their lives. Whoa, no. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. Get, get, keep it away, right? Not not, not on this bachelor party. But you <laughs> throw your pen into the distance, like into the very <laughs> sun you do. Um, of course, it's, it's fantasy land, so it's just like a quill, so it just kind of like flips awkwardly and, and falls in the dirt. Um, one of the, like a clown just appears and like puts it in his shirt and disappears. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, cool. <laughs> uh, remarkably well handled, folks. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, you hear um, just a sound of like, and mud butt, your, your heart soars because you turn and in slow motion out of uh, what you view is like really cool, like smoke, but is actually just um, like a, a, a dirt cloud from this disgusting stable. Um, two oxen uh, just come like stomping forward in tuxedos, looking like the rock when he wears a tuxedo, just like all <laughs> muscle, perfectly cut, just like stomping forward. And out of the, the mist come two clowns leaning forward like they're at the front of a ship with like um, sparklers in each hand. Uh, and then they do like the Wonder Twins or like Dragon Ball Z thing where they both like lean in with their sparklers <laughs> Um, and, um, in unison, uh, their, their noses without touching them honk <laughs> and they say, mud, but it is your special day and we are here to take you to fun. <laughs> and then the ox are like, Ugh! and they're like, the ox agree. <laughs> and, uh, your cart arrives. Um, Ooh. it is a full-on party wagon. It is, uh, as we talked, like a covered pioneer wagon, but there are enchanted fairy lights on each of the major, like, ribs of it. Um, so it's, like, piped with lights. Um, there are a couple of, like, uh, enchanted fire spells under the cart to give it, like, that weird glow that you get under... Um, yeah. Fast and the Furious cars. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, you hear the clown say, engage the hydraulics. And then quickly Kevin leaps out, runs around and like quickly like unscrews a wheel. So the whole thing goes 
then like screws it back on, runs around, does another one. Um, so the whole thing, like it takes about 12 minutes, but he manages to like hydraulically shift it around. Oh um, God. And then uh, he shows up. Um, Tyler, uh, Ty- uh, Kevin is the uh, bartending clown. Um, and he's kind of going to be the DJ and like a uh, promoter within uh, the party wagon. What is he wearing? What is he wearing? Um, he is wearing um, a cool leather jacket, uh, but underneath a big, big, big polka dot bow tie. <laughs> uh, and then he he has uh, headphones, um, and he's wearing uh, like the big kind of like pointy hat, like birthday hat. Um, coming up the top, but the headphones each ca- each can uh, has the points coming out as well. And it's all uh, polka dots and stripes, and they've got like pom poms on each one. Um, all right, so uh, great. Um, uh, so he comes around and he's like, uh, and he's like out of breath from like cranking the cart for twelve <laughs> minutes. He's like, okay, um, yo, yo, yo. Uh, welcome to uh, oh sorry guys sorry I just uh whew. sorry it's a it's a heavy cart it's a heavy cart all right my name is DJ Kevin boy sorry I can hear that in my clown horns um listen uh, I'm gonna be your uh, DJ and master of ceremonies for your ride to and he like checks his hand and um. Reginald, like, you see him doing this, and it's like, oh, yeah, like, game recognized game, same technique. And he's yeah, like, and two- I, I lean over and tap Quinn, and I'm like, do I have to kiss this clown? No, you, like, we talked about old friends was the kissing thing. You just say hello, new friend, to new people. I thought I said hello, old friend, and then I would kiss them. Nope, you remembered it wrong. <laughs> but but I wrote it I wrote it down, so I can't correct it. I was going to borrow his pen, but he threw it away, and that clown stole it. Well, do you think you can remember this conversation we're literally having right now? Hello, old friend. Uh, and then nope, I kiss Quinny. Right. <laughs> I, I uppercut him. I'm like, get away. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. Looks like we already got some bachelor party hijinks up in here. Um, Alan, you you suddenly feel tremendously nostalgic for dear sweet bourbon sherbet. Because um, this is very much uh, the douche bot of the fantasy realm. Um and then you remember that he's leading the mages, and just that that shadow of concern passes through your mind yet again. Um, and he's like, "All right, well, listen, you know what? No fights on the cart. That's part of Low Clown Fifty Two regulations. But in the meantime, let's get on this cart." Um, and then he goes and like awkwardly has to crank down like a set of stairs, and then he like awkwardly pulls a carpet down them, and it doesn't quite fit. Like, Watch your step, cause it's not attached. <laughs> <laughs> and then sparklers burst out of his sleeves. All right, everyone, be careful. I had several soldiers get injured on steps like these, and we use them on the battlefields. Uh, <clears throat> I'll go tromp up them. <laughs> Just Quinny, like, uh, yeah, okay, that's enough of that story. Th- that's really good <laughs> advice. <laughs> Um, so all of you, uh, mount up and sure enough, uh, like we're going to use a stretch limo as, as a baseline for this, just cause I think it's easier for all of our brains. So there is like a window where you can see, um, Jeffrey Bartholomew Stevenson and Ga, um, on and like basically out the front, you can see them like kick up the oxen and, um, one of them actually like is, is fiddling with a device. The other one has both his sparklers out and then whenever they die, he just, like, tosses them and then he's like, has to fumble around and, like, light them. And then he's trying to light the other guys because um, sparklers are never as, as majestic as they seem. Also, it's the morning. So, like, there's really no effect other yeah. than just them doing it. <clears throat> but one of them seems to be um, fiddling with sort of a cylindrical device. And as he does so, um, you can see kind of like the environment around you begin to shift. Um, and it's uh, slowly kind of the uh, the forest and greener around you is almost melting away, and um, you can feel the heat starting to rise. Uh, you get the sense that it's basically like, for lack of a better term, low-grade teleportation tech, uh, remembering that Oasis is deep in the deserts. Um, there's no way to just, like, ride there from uh, water deep. Um, so that starts to happen. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, you've got a bit of time on the ride. 
But uh, that's kind of where what's uh, beginning to happen. Uh, meanwhile, inside, um, Kevin has uh, got behind the bar and like, sure enough, just as you'd ordered mud, but along both sides, you've got pork, you've got apples, there's barrels of wine, uh, and yeah. he starts spinning a party song to get y'all in the mood. Uh, Adam, what is the, the song you would have instructed the clowns uh, to play? Um, he's playing an original piece called Pork Barrels, uh, pork, pork Barrels, Apples and Wine. <laughs> if if this was sung in uh, our world, who would be the singer or band? Oh, it'd be uh, Pitbull. <laughs> yeah, I love you so much, man. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. Mister Worldwide himself. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Singing about um, the uh, the pork barrels. Yeah, it's but when he's like, playing it, it's really just Kevin singing it. So he just keeps, keeps yelling, Mr. Cart wide. <laughs> yeah, well, he he turns his clown horns out and you see that there are tiny um, portals inside. So there's clearly somewhere where a band is playing and um, he's just kind of pumping it through. Uh, clown Co. is not a cheap service, but as the king no, of Winchester. I, oh, I paid a lot for this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he keeps adding in, and of course, because it's a Pitbull song, it's actually someone else singing the whole thing, and then just him occasionally speed rapping, like, three lines, and then just yelling his own name. Um, so, like, Fantasy Kesha does most of the work, but then occasionally <laughs> uh, Mr. Faerun Wide hops in. Um, <laughs> so, you all have uh, basically a luxury Mr. ride. Mr. Faerun Wide, Miami, Kevin. <laughs> 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 oh, guys, one day we'll release the soundtrack of this series, and it is going to be a banger. Uh, all right, so um, <clears throat> all of you have this ride uh, to Oasis. It's going to take a little while. You all get to kind of settle in. Um, again, Quinny, like, you're still kind of overcome by this sense of, like, you... This is pretty... And I mean, I would argue this would be true for Butthole as well. Um, it's been a while since you guys have not been in mortal danger for any reason, really. Uh, pretty much since the McSquiggly went down, it's been pretty wild. Um, and also, uh, even though you and Alan have, have been through some shit of late with, you know, Farthole and the whole strike on, on the castle, uh, you guys still haven't really spent that much time. It's only been a few days uh, since she yeah. got back. So um, basically, uh, this is a social encounter between the party um, you all have a little bit to kind of um, talk about stuff, but what I would encourage all of you to do, and Mudbutt, this goes for you as well, and Reginald, even though technically you're both strangers to the rest of the group, um, I think on, on this little ride, um, what's one thing you want to know about each other? And we'll say everyone gets one and everyone can ask one person, and it's fine if it's the same person multiple times. But like, what's um, just one kind of, and not a deep question, but just a casual small talk, we're in a limo question do you think you might have? Because I've had some fucking weird limo conversations just because everyone's like, oh, cool, someone paid a lot of money for us to be in this thing. What's the nicest vehicle you've ever been in? Like, just pick a, an innocuous question, but also Quinny and Alan, I think, um, particularly with Reginald now, is like a member of the team until you can figure out how to deal with the phylacteries. Um, it might be time to kind of reconnect. So yeah. Yeah. what are what are what what do all of you... We'll, we'll imagine this very much as, like, this isn't one continuous scene. It's like, as, you know, there's small talk and fun and laughing and drinking and all that shit. But we're going to just zoom in on those specific spotlight moments of, like, you know, the most significant thing any of you say. So, uh, Mudbutt, I got a question for you. So you're getting married. Seems like a big thing. You're already married. So, like, <laughs> how yeah. could you bring yourself to, like, marry a person who's then, like, in your bed every night, and if they just, like, killed you, then they'd rule the kingdom. Doesn't that seem, like, c crazy? <laughs> oh, uh, I'll be honest. That Sometimes that would pass my mind with uh, with other people that uh, that I've met in the past, but no, 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 no. My my lioness is, is everything to me. She's, uh... <laughs> my, my, my life has just changed so much for the better the way she holds me. Sometimes she cradles me like a little baby because she's bigger than me. And uh, just just <laughs> the things that we share together. It, it's great. And So how, uh, how do you know that she's, like, not just faking it to then murder you and take all your stuff? Oh, because... God, I wish I could cast deafness on myself. <laughs> oh, because you, you, you just know when you look into someone's eyes, you, you see into their soul and you and you feel their, their heart beat with yours and you know that they're just the one that you're meant to be with. 
All right, then look into my eyes, Mudbutt. I want to know if you're going to kill me in my sleep. Uh, and <laughs> Reginald just leans in and, like, stares knowingly <laughs> into Mudbutt's eyes. What? No, I, I, you're, you're my butt. I never do that. Unless you, like, uh, ended up being, like, not yourself, like some sort of weird, like, doppelganger of yourself. And then, I, <laughs> then like, I would just, I don't know. I, I've never actually thought about that. If I, I met know, what, someone. What would you do? Like, let's uh, just imagine. Wild world. Hmm. I'm a doppelganger who maybe killed you in an alternate dimension. Like, what, okay. what would you do? Oh, that's, that, that, that's a good one. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, so alternate dimension me is dead. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then I find out you are not you, but another doppelganger you. Pretending yeah. to be me, and you've been tricking me the whole time. Hmm. Yes, okay, yes, okay. absolutely. Um, all right, well, I'd uh, I'd go get Deathmonger, uh, and I'd uh, just clean slice you in half. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh, that would be so funny. Uh, oh. But what would you do if someone killed uh, killed your Richard? Um, well, I, <laughs> what I did to my my zombie castle dad, I'd uh, I'd full on just go berserk and slice him in half, crotch up. <laughs> okay, so we got the the right uh, up upsy downsy or lefty righty. Those are the options for a doppelganger. Good thing there's no doppelganger here. Am I right? Oh no! I mean that's that's just ridiculous. Oh. Like the chances oh. of that happening uh, is oh, just man. insane. Yeah, probably better than you'd think, but still long odds. <laughs> um, oh, you're mud butt. You uh, you notice just like a tinge of, of sadness in that laughter, and um, the last thing you want is for anyone to be upset on your bachelor party adventure. Hmm. Um, and you're worried, you know, like some stuff's probably happened about Hull since you last saw him. Um, uh, so here's my question to you, and you you can answer either way. Uh, do you try and have like a quick like how you doing bud check in, or is this just something you're gonna log for maybe a later in the day? This is early in the bachelor party, and also having been on a few of these that end fairly sloppily um there might be like a better like we're eight drinks in time to like ask you the deep questions time um what do you think mudbutt would do uh i think he senses if he senses sadness he's like well that Mm -hmm. just means he's not drinking enough so then uh he would send (laughs) he'd send over a couple barrels to he'd he'd kind of motion uh worldwide kevin and uh just be like uh K-, K world, get to, K- K- come on over K- here. My uh, my old uh, my old friend here is going to need some more barrels of your finest mash booze. Um, yeah, and he just says, "Oh yeah, the top shelf stuff, Mister Cartwide." And he grabs um a, a smaller barrel off the uh, the shelf. Um, and he slams it down in front of you, and he's like. This is the best rum Miami has to offer. And if there's one thing Miami's known for, it's rum. Miami is a town on the coast. Don't worry about it. Fantasy realms. And he pops the cork. Uh, yeah, it's, and, that, it's that weird village where uh, the lizard people eat the elderly. <laughs> Miami! Lizard people. Mr. Cartwide. And he slides you the rum. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, having discovered that I'm doomed to be sliced in half, either up, down, or left, right, I will drink the whole bottle of rum and advance to my first stage of drunkenness. There you go. Good stuff. Um, all right. So while this conversation is happening, uh, Quinny and Alan, you have a moment or two. Um, there's a, a hot second where I think both of you just stare in horror as Reginald engages mud button conversation. Uh, yeah. But then you realize that weirdly, this is actually all right. They're They're... Oddly well suited to each other. My um, butt is enough of an idiot. <laughs> and Reginald uh, is enough of a con man, it turns out. I get uh, I get a water for Alan and myself. Um, and uh, while they're... Uh, Cooney, I'm going to need you to roll me a persuasion check, because Mr. Cartwide does not want the party to stop. So you got to talk him into giving you water, because... Uh, Low clown fifty two, not great on the health regulations. All right, so we're clear with the D six. So the persuasion then is persuasion uh, sixteen. Cool. Yeah. So you managed to talk Mr. Cartwide into uh, you just say you need mix, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's mix over there, and you you find the water that he has for himself because uh, mm-hmm. it is dehydrating. Being that D J E. That famous. Um, <laughs> yep, truly. Um, he only wears white suits. So, like, if you sweat through that, you're just fucked. 
yeah. so um, yeah, so you get water for you and Alan. Um, I'll say, uh, what drink level are both of you at right now? I'm at four. Four? I am also at four. All right, uh, I'm gonna roll a d4 of hydration. Ooh. Uh, all right, yeah, you can each drop two from that. Nice. Oh man. It's a combination of the apples, the pork, and the water. Um, because you're putting in the conscious effort to not get shit faced. Um, <laughs> cool. So the two of you have your uh, waters in like weird yeah. fancy champagne glasses. Um, I think the question that I have, I'll, it'll be for Alan. And it's just, it's a very generalized question, but I'll just be like sitting down just under the din of like music and these two other guys kind of like palling around and laughing loudly and awkwardly. <laughs> um, I'm just going to ask Alan, um, how, uh, how are you holding up? Uh, y- you know, you know. Kind of a lot. You happened. know. Yeah. You good? <sighs> sure. I don't know, like, fuck. (laughs) Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. (laughs) I just want you to know, like, it's it's you and me right now, right? Like, Mudbutt's just trying to have a good time. He doesn't know about a lot of the stuff that's kind of maybe weighing weighing the group down. And Reginald, I mean, he seems to be getting by okay. It's almost like, it's almost like Butthole's back in some ways, but, you know, you're... You're I know, the one constant ki- for me right now. It kind now. of, like, he keeps throwing me off guard, to be honest. Like, yeah. keep seeing him out of the corner of my eye, and it's just like, ha, ah, that's not butthole, he's dead. <laughs> I know what you mean. He just tried to kiss me, and it was like... Yeah, me I, too, I, earlier. It was wild. It was I, messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Look, anyway, I'm just checking in, because, you know, I'm counting on you. I want, I want you to be able to count on me, and uh, yeah. together we're going to get through this bachelor party yeah for sure this bachelor like <laughs> he, like burps a little this bachelor party hey hey what's what what was what was the funniest thing that that butthole did while i was away a funniest thing that he did while you were away yeah uh i mean he he did a lot of stupid funny it could be shit, just stupid i tell you yeah uh <laughs> um he uh, he did attend um, a sort of like a gladiatorial match, um, and he saw, he found out that, uh, that oh, you might not know this, Von Strauss has taken up the mantle of the Forsaken, and boy, when he saw oh, someone shit. else as the Forsaken, he really lost his cool. <laughs> he got, and we, it was like a secret mission and stuff like that, and like we couldn't really like get distracted. But man, did that really send him on a whole tizzy? It was pretty funny. That's pretty great. So is Von Strauss still a Forsaken? As far as I can tell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, shit. And he's 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 pr- protecting uh, Never Ember's son. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway. Simpler times, which is a weird fucking thing to say. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> and um, with that, um, there's a, a blast of heat um, that just kind of overtakes all of you from um, the uh, the windows. And um, <clears throat> you hear God just yell, Oh, desert! <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, uh, <laughs> we're, we're calling him Mr. Like... K wide was K- that what we K- 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 world K wide K- world so K world turns around he's like oh shit looks like we're coming up on your destination please tip your bartender and then it just slides a jar forward um, and in the distance you can see um, the Oasis um, hotel uh, appear on the horizon um, Adam think like um, it's essentially a if you took, like, you know the towers around the Taj Mahal? They're kind of those beautiful, tall um, sort of columns. Uh, but then it was like a pyramid in between those uh, in oh. the middle of the desert. Uh, very lush greenery around it. Uh, it's a massive kind of hotel and gaming complex. Oh, sweet. Um, and uh, the the oxen are clearly, like, really having a hard time with these tuxedos now. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're pulling up... Um, and as they start to pull up to the hotel, uh, Quinny, you, you actually get an answer to a question you, you hadn't asked, um, which is there are banners fluttering um, from these these towers. 
uh, that broadly announce um, the fire festival brought to you by the planteers. <laughs> and there's just a big picture of uh, Ignis on each of them. Um, and uh, the, the date is listed for tomorrow. So you've got kind of today to like party hard and then likely all night into the next day. Um, but, uh, the, the festival kicks off proper the next day and seeing, um, people in like, just wearing like weird party garb. There's like a lot of like ring lights and that sort of thing. Uh, you realize that the way you're going to get into this is by having to attend this weird hippie festival full of Faerun hipsters and you look down at your own gear and the t-shirt that you really thought was going to be the end of this. And you realize it is going to be a tremendously long day. Yeah, he's going to look over to Mudbutt and be like, really, dude? Really? <laughs> we're going to kill him at his own goddamn convention? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, we're, well look, we're going to... He's. We're going to burn this place to the ground, man. It's going to be like both literally and figuratively in the party. We're going to watch his show. And like, I figure he has like kind of like a Siegfried and Roy show, but like the tiger, <laughs> but like the tigers are like owl bears instead. Yep, sure. Um, huh. So he just has like 50 owl bears that he like performs tricks with. Uh, Burns them to death. Yeah. So we're going to watch, we're, we're going to watch the show. And then we're going to, I'm going to like put on a disguise and I'm going to be like, now we're ready to that show. And then crotch to face. I'm just going to split it in half. <laughs> It'll take well, like I've, five minutes tops. I was really it worried. It never about takes bringing, five minutes. <laughs> really worried about bringing this flaming war hammer into a casino. But I think we chose the two days where they're going to let it happen. Now you're cool. You're cool. I, I, I called ahead with a raven. Yeah. After all, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong at the Fire Festival. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Elizabeth at EL Hamstring on Twitter, our amazing special guest, and our fantastic DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode was edited by Ryan LaPlante, and all of Dum Dums and Dice's art is by Decapitated Markers or at Decapitated Marker on Twitter. That's M R K R. Our theme songs are And Now for That Massive Coronary and Skipping Through the Orchestra Pit Part 1 by Peter Gresser. And our ad music is No Control and Cheap. By Jazzar, J A H Z Z A R, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D U M B D U M B D I C E. Now I'm off to do more magic. See you next episode. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christian Manicola, Long Long, The Half-Blind Prophet, James Quayar, DM Rob, Christopher Little, Joshua White, Olin Anderson, Sue One, Devin Boyce, George Dolby, One True Artistry, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them and a little bit of thanks to you.